I think it's important to state that these are dark times, these are uncertain times, but I, for one, am not panicking. So on with the show. Hello, everybody. Can you see me now? Am I coming in loud and clear? How's it looking? Let me know. Um, I don't know what the uh, the state of the state is, uh, but we're, we're going to see. We're going to see if it's working um, and if we're in better shape. Let me know. Give me some thumbs up in the chat. Let me know how it's looking, if it's coming in. Good so far. Oh, that's something. All right. So we did a little bit of, uh, of uh, tech support which is to say uh, just making sure everything was off, making sure everything wasn't being, uh, you know, messed with. So let's see how we're doing. How's everybody doing? Let me know, channel members, Mark's Music Obsession, Cranberry Langers, Stephen Rockwood. Um, <laughs> hello, hello, Shoff looks intermittent. I'll take that. That'll do in a pinch. Uh, let me know, guys, and uh, we're just gonna press on like lean nails. That's what we've got to do today. You know, I mean, that's that's just how it goes. So today, I wanted to do a stream where, uh oh, little lag, but still better than before. All right, all right. Well, we'll see what we can do. We'll see what we can do, guys. Um, we're just gonna keep uh, trying to make this, uh, make it through this thing. This is the same thing that uh, I was running into yesterday. You know, looks better though. All right, that's cool. So let's try, let's try and see if we can we can do something about that. So here's what I've been doing today. I've been bagging and boarding books. I've been getting things organized. I've also got in the mail today a Comicscape project. I got the book Judix, which I don't know if any of you guys uh, backed, but it is a book that's based on a silent film pulp hero, and I'm excited to open that box up and check that out. So, you know, pretty bad still. <laughs> oh, no, Mark. Mark, I'm sorry, man. I don't know why it's not looking good. I think it's the eclipse, guys. I think that's what it is. We are at the height of the eclipse right now. I bet everybody is either on the internet or streaming or doing something. That must be it. So we'll see if we can we can make it through to the other side. Um, you know, you know how it goes. You know how it goes. Um, we'll get there. Or maybe it's your eclipse. You never know, guys. You never know. It could be your eclipse, but we'll see. Um, let me see here. All right. Hey, what's up, our Luniverse? How are you doing? I hope you are doing well. Yeah, it's probably the eclipse. You're right. Well, we're going to we're gonna press on. Um, so this phase right here of doing what I'm doing is, is when I'm reloading my shipping boxes. So my shipping boxes are essentially just comic book long boxes or magazine size long boxes I have over there. And so as I get these books um, prepared to ship, I'll fill those out and then I'll put them into the cardboard boxes and then I'll refill those. And so that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm also going to be doing some painting here. But I just wanted to do um, do another stream because yesterday, funny enough, we had technical difficulties. I only streamed for about an hour and a half because my family got home and I was just like going, eh, and I was just in a, in a mood and I thought, you know what, I, I was watching several of my, my videos have been held at a certain count lower than the count that they have in the analytics and I just went, um, and I've got to go and do more, but I'm going to private some of those streams where they're doing that and see if that affects things at all because uh, I have no idea what's causing it or why that stuff is happening, but it definitely takes the wind out of your sails. But I wanted to show you guys this process because I probably don't do this. Um, well, I know I don't do this on stream very often, but um, it is the thing that I'm enjoying the most right now is just bagging these things up. Um, we're well on our way, getting things ready for the Second Chance campaign. Don't worry, Mark, it's coming. And um, and it's just it's really cool to see people getting this book, and then at the same time, today I got somebody else's book. And that was cool. So let me actually just move that right there so you guys can see see this part of the process here. <laughs> I love the way this book looks, guys. So excited. Henry Bemis, how are you doing? Yes, all is sort of well, brother. <laughs> My streams have just been a mess, man. They're, they've been um, 
they've been uh, they've been stopped. Our internet's gone down. We had a um, one of our cell towers go down. So I don't know if that's everybody using our Wi-Fi in this area. You know who knows? Like I I don't know how the internet works. And we've got Ferris Comics channel member of the house. It's great to see you, brother. Everything is going very very well, Henry. Every time I see you, every time I see you in the chat. I get very fond Twilight Zone feelings, man. And, ah, oh, man, it is... I've been watching a lot of older entertainment. Obviously, I've been doing the movie show on um, Thursdays. And I've been sitting back and I've just been going, what um, what stuff do I want to do? It's tough to think about when you're doing, your, um, doing a YouTube channel. What do you want to do and where do you want to go with it? And right now, one of the things I've been thinking about doing is doing some... Uh, pre-recorded stuff where I really get to show people the fly on the wall aspect of how I make these things. But today I just wanted to pack books and share that with you guys because, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's the big part of what I do. And I don't stream it a lot because I'm usually worried about when I'm boxing things, if I'm going to dock somebody and you know, when you're spinning a lot of plates, it can be very difficult to, it's sort of the N plus one thing where you, it seems like it's a small thing, like it's a very obvious, like, did I eat lunch today kind of realization? But I was thinking, well, how do I show this? And I went, well, when I'm bagging these things or I'm, you know, sealing these things, nobody's address is, I don't think, <laughs> just had a moment there. Nobody's address is on my desk, so I don't have to worry about that stuff. So that's how it goes. But how have you guys been? Uh, let me see here. Where are we, Henry? Um, I've been watching a lot of old Western shows lately. Man, the writing was good. What was the show that I started watching uh, that Razor Fist had suggested the entire thing is on YouTube? I think it's in the public domain. And is it a one-armed gunman in it? Oh, I would know the name if I saw it. Uh, I think, uh, of course, Bill Shatner has a, um, has a cameo in it at some point. And uh, shoot, Henry, do you know the show I'm talking about? It's, uh, oh, it's escaping me, man. It's escaping me. I, I'm trying to think of what the show is called. But yeah, I love Westerns. I've got, you know, two Western paintings from where I'm sitting right here. And, um, and of course, the thing I did for Razor Fist, Ghost of the Badlands. Tate! Thank you, Tate. Henry Bemis for the win. Yes, Tate. I was watching that, and, um, and the other day, and I was thinking, is there a, um, are they ever going to do a remaster of some of these things? Are they ever going to remaster these shows? Because it's out there, and I tried running it through an upscaling program because I was going to try to see if I could do anything with it. But it's just, um, there's not enough resolution to do anything that's, you know, particularly effective with it. And um, I would love to see some of these things restored and remastered. If they are, I want to know where they're at, you know. Hey, what's up? I think I grew a tail, says Diesel in the house. My brother, it's good to see you, my friend. How are you doing? <laughs> Diesel's always bringing the love and the enthusiasm. Channel member, Diesel. Don't ever, ever get it twisted, folks. There he is. Um, yeah, man, it's 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 wild. And and I was um, uh, someone was kind enough to uh, put up a review of Nosfero on Twitter, which was really uh, really great to see. Yeah, just a lot of stuff, like a lot of craziness going on in terms of, and and a lot of it good, and and I just, uh, you know, it's a lot to take in. You know, I'm trying to, you know, plan things while wrapping up, you know, the shipping aspect of this, and um, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> you guys are seeing the the OCD element of this, um, which is trying to get everything to be nicely lined up but yeah this is a nice tall stack of of the signed and then i've got a whole stack of the sign with the prints already in the boxes so that's pretty much what we're doing and then like i said um let me see if i can do this without doxing myself yeah here we go i just got in the mail uh judix a uh comic skate book i backed not long ago i forget what stream i was on but i was on a stream with somebody and uh met the creators i think it was michael's stream actually and uh, just back to that, you know. Oh, haven't gotten Gary Martin's book yet, but it looks amazing. Now, which book is that? Because I have, I got back in college, I have his uh, inking book. But uh, I actually, I've got Gary Martin on this list. I'm going to be sending out his book soon. So um, that's awesome. Yeah, you got to let me know which book it was. 
Um, Cranberry Lan Landers is heading out. Take care, brother. Um, have a good stream. Enjoy the solar eclipse. I will. Yeah, it's been that kind of day, my friend. Uh, yeah, everybody's saying hello. Yep, yeah, lag seems fixed now, says John. Awesome. Great stuff, guys. Um, oh, yeah, I backed Gary's book, too. That'll be beautiful. You know who I'd love to see? Um, oh, Brush with Destiny, his crowdfunder. Was that on... Um, was that on Fun My Comic? I don't know if I backed that or not. I don't know if I backed that. That's weird. Um, but uh, but yeah, oh my gosh, man. Yeah, Gary's stuff is beautiful. My uh, my brother, uh, Rocky, who you guys know from his YouTube channel, uh, and he, on my channel, he's been on my channel, it was, he introduced, him and I both, I don't know if he introduced me to it, but we both had that book in college. And uh, it's... Oh man, it's a great, um, it's a great book. It was a great resource. It had, you know, he got Dave Stevens to show how he inked and I, I'm a massive Dave Stevens fan. So that was, uh, that was something else to see. Let's see if I can move that. There we go. Let's get a little bit more of a, uh, camera angle on that. So yeah, this is what we do. Yeah. Brush with Destiny. Um, was his new art book. The other was his old inking book. Is that available? Okay, so Henry Bemis says it is on Fun My Comic. Um, I'm watching the eclipse on my college campus. They say it's only visible in Texas right now. Can anyone else see it? Wow, there you go. I don't know. Um, I think we had it here for a little bit. So yeah, oh man, that's great. Yeah. I, you know what I'd love to... Oh, I didn't even finish my sentence. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things I would be very curious to see, and I'm sure he's got a lot of work going on right now, but I'd love to see a John Malin uh, digital uh, cover inked by Gary Martin. I think that could be very cool. I don't know. I don't know if that's something John would be into, but um, sometimes I think there could be something to be said for that. I'd love to see. Um, I'd love to see some of the artists who are working digitally get a traditionally inked cover of their artwork because I think that might be. I know a lot of people work that way. But that could really add an interesting um, wrinkle in terms of, of stylistic collaboration. But um, yeah, I've been thinking about that a lot. Okay, so all these are stacked up and ready to rock. Um, oh, cool. He had a few copies, cost some money. Oh, reach out to Gary. He might have a copy left. Awesome. Yeah, his inking book, oh, is out of print. He offered some copies on his campaign. Oh, I was hoping it was a reprint, but makes sense. Gary Martin's Brush with Destiny. There it is. Is it still funding? on uh, fun my comic interesting yeah that's great I, I i really want to do a fun my comic campaign uh but hang on a second i'm gonna put these in the uh in the box here for for shipping these ones are ready a lot of comics Oh, don't want to drop this stuff here. The nose knows. Um, <laughs> got a little bit of chomp as the shadow in there. Man, here we go. Okay, so I've got that. All right. So yeah, so when I'm doing this, when I'm signing or I'm doing anything like this, I've got these these heavy duty pieces of cardboard. Oh, it closed 90 days. <laughs> Steven, it closed nine days ago, but thank you for being up in there. Everyone noticed Shant is not showing you his super secret packaging techniques. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, they're super secret, all right. They're super something. And uh, let's see here. Move the postcards. And these are, of course, the trading cards. You know, it's so funny. The way I do things, the way I pack the books, the way I do all of that, it's really... Um, it's really so I can keep track of everything and make sure that everybody gets what they're supposed to get. And, um, you know, that's just a big factor for everybody who's doing all of the stuff, you know, themselves. And this right here, this cardboard is what they pack with my printed books. And it's a good way for me to make sure I've got a very clean surface. And then this piece of cardboard right here is what I use when I'm signing books or signing prints or anything like that. So that's a big part of the process is putting that stuff together. So anyway, there is your... Uh, there is your glimpse at the process um, for a little bit, and I may come back and do more. I'm not sure, but um, let's do let's do what we do here, guys. You guys know this story. 
um, we do some painting here. So I'm going to adjust the uh, camera a little bit here because it was set up for uh, the packaging aspect of things. And let's see. And now let me get to there's the gamma adjustment and let's do the saturation adjustment and there we go guys so let's talk a little bit if we may let's talk a little bit about battle brick road so i just heard he's watching the eclipse right now i don't know uh anything about what time these things happen i do not trust it I don't trust the eclipse i've seen too many movies my kids and my wife have been making fun of me um but that's all right um <laughs> it happens and um I, I, so I don't, you know, I don't know what time it's hitting everywhere, but I got a message from Eric Weathers earlier today, like around one o'clock, to let me know that he had received my book. Everyone knows, <laughs> yeah, sounds super secret techniques. Thumbs up. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, Fun My Comics, or Fun My Comic was a site that was started by some folks who felt like that we needed an alternative to fall back on in terms of what was going on in the crowdfunding, um, other major platforms. And a lot of people have been using it and um, trying to support it because it's um, it's a great, you know, it's a great uh, alternative for us to have available. And so I know that a bunch of people in CG have used it and um, <clears throat> it has a slightly different structure. I think it pays the, uh, pays the creators uh, as it funds. So that's kind of nice. So that's a really good option for some people. and um, But I mean, I haven't used it myself, so I can't be an authority on it by any stretch. So that's the way it goes. Uh, let me do this too. Let me come in here and let's zoom a little bit. There we go. Move that over and you guys can see this. So yeah, working on throwing some color on the Tin Man right now. And this, this painting has kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies. This painting has kind of taken on a life of its own in terms of uh, where it went because it was originally going to be a somewhat, um, you know, more simplified, uh, <laughs> as if that's something I'm, I'm apparently capable of pulling off. But it was going to be, <clears throat> goodness gracious, man, it's not one thing, it's another. Uh, it was going to be a much more simplified uh, piece and a pinup, and then I just... I got carried away because the characters in Battle Brick Road are so compelling and so interesting. I didn't want to do a piece for Eric Weathers and not allow myself to paint as many of the characters as I wanted, so I just went nuts on it. Yeah, people go silly when they realize celestial things are moving about. Amen. Yeah, I definitely go silly. Dion, what's up? How are you doing? It is good to see you. Um, and uh, yeah, hello at John. Hi at John, I should say. Welcome, welcome. I hope you are having a wonderful day and a wonderful eclipse. Let me see here. There we go. So if you're new to the channel, if you haven't been here, make sure you're subscribed. If you haven't hit, liked the stream yet, make sure you do that. It's always appreciated. I've been uh, in a wrestling match with the... Uh, YouTube uh, algorithmic antics lately and that's fine we do what we do and we get things done but what I'm working with right now is I'm using opaque pan watercolors by a company called Pelican I also use acrylics from time to time but right now I'm using what I, I commonly refer to as gouache because that's really what it is it's like Japanese poster paint what you typically see people using for backgrounds in uh, Japanese uh, anime films back in the day a lot of the Miyazaki films, it's got that kind of consistency. And so it's a water-based paint. It moves like watercolor, but it can also be a little bit more opaque if you need it to be. So yeah, so that's what you guys are seeing right now. Uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, Chrome, hey, Sean. <clears throat> hey, Sean, hey, Chrome. My gosh, what is going on? <laughs> um, wow, definitely good at multitasking. Thank you so much, Sean. Dion is a friend of mine from Carrie's channel. There you go. Look at this. You guys are so funny, man. Uh, I love it. Uh... Excellent, excellent. Well, I am glad to see you here. That's what I will say. Yeah, I can definitely walk and chew gum when it comes to this stuff. And uh, that is a real blessing because it really is what this channel has been based on. This channel has been based on um, 
the fact that I like to paint, I like to make work, and I want to give people a look behind the curtain at the entire process of making a comic. You know, as, as someone who is a comic skate artist and, and who is a writer and creator, um, we came and we created this independent space where we're attempting to put out the best work possible to an audience that is interested in the kind of genre and pulp work and the big mythic work that has always been something of interest. And what's cool about it is, is that as I'm looking at the package I just received today of uh, Judix, is that um, not only do you have the fun of backing these books, but as often is the case with me, I will forget that I backed a book and then the book will arrive and I'll go, oh yeah, I've been waiting to see that book. So yeah, it's been a very, um, it's a very cool space to be in. And, uh, and so this book right here is, or this is for a poster collection or print collection, I should say, uh, that's going to be available in either a, uh, you can take it out of the book if you want to, to put it on your wall, or you can leave it in the book if you prefer to keep things that way. That's going to be, I believe, an 11 by 17 print collection of Eric Weathers' Battle Brick Road and a lot of amazing artists working on it. Dan Lawless, Eric's got a piece in there. Um, and so um, do check it out. Do check it out and back it if you haven't. The link is in the description. Here we go. And yeah, what I like about this story is that every character, or I should say about this world, is that every character in Eric's book is an interpretation. It's completely its own thing from what you would know. So that if you know, um, you know, the Wizard of Oz and that world, you are still going to be pleasantly surprised by what Zeb Hatfield, the writer of the book, and Eric Weathers, uh, official letterer designer of Ethan Van Skyver's All, Cap Com All Caps Comics, um, and um, he is uh, a hell of an artist in his own right and does some incredible stuff. And um, that is the world that he has kind of been. This is, in a lot of ways, this book goes really back to the beginning of Comicsgate, but even before then, because Eric was uh, working with these characters and working on this book in the independent scene for a while before it you know, was born as Battle Brick Road here in CG. So just a really cool world. If you like action, if you like adventure with a little bit of fantasy and and um, myth, obviously, then this is the book for you. You know, mmm, coffee time. John, that sounds wonderful. And Dan Lawless, my man, that's his channel, guys. Make sure you subscribe to it. And there is the link from Stephen Rockwood drawing to Battle Brick Road 2, guys. Yeah, check it out. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. It's great stuff. Let me see here. And there's so many options on that campaign right now. There's so many different things that you can get and uh, so many different things you can pick up. I actually got uh, the vinyl record, which there's a vinyl record that's going to be uh, two of the songs that he had a soundtrack made for both the trailer and then it's going to be put out as a record. And uh, I'm a big lover of uh, vinyl records and, you know, all of that kind of thing. So that's uh, that was a no-brainer for me. But, of course, the poster book that's going to have my work in it and uh, all of these other amazing CG artists do pick that up, especially if you want um, a print or poster of my stuff. And, you know, it's funny, the two the two commissions I've done have ended up as either in this print book or posters, and one is the one I did for Razor Fist for Ghost of the Badlands. That's going to be in the hardcover of the book, and it's also going to be a poster, and then um, the one I'm doing for Eric. So that's very cool. I didn't really think I was going to be in that type of situation when I started this stuff, that... Uh, I'd have that opportunity to do it, but here we are, guys. <laughs> I always love, I always love when the streams start off the rails. Um, I've had now two in a row of that. I just am like, oh my god, it's too funny. So yeah, a lot of this stuff. I mean, I talk about this stuff because Eric's also a painter. What's up, Mister Monkey Boy, nineteen sixty nine? How are you doing, man? It's great to see you. Eclipse left like a cheap way of the night. Yes, it happens. It happened here too. Um, one of the things for me that um eric and i've been talking about as as you know artists and painters and the stuff that we're interested in is just the way that you use value hierarchy to delineate foreground middle ground and background and that's one of the first things that i do when i'm here is that i'm you know at this stage of the painting when i'm trying to add in characters or delineate things i just want to make sure that i'm getting in the silhouettes 
so that when people look at it at first blush, they kind of see, oh, okay. He's standing on that right there. And that's why that works. And he's standing, hey, what? <laughs> Rocky. Everybody send some love to Rocky in the chat, man. Good dude. Did anyone burn their retinas on the eclipse? I hope not, brother. I was just talking about you. I was just uh, just singing your praises. So maybe your ears were burning and you had to come in here. How's everything on the West Coast, brother? How's the eclipse on your end? There we go. If you are not subscribed to Rocky Ballesteros' channel on YouTube, make sure you are. Rocky, if you could drop the link to your channel. Uh, the groomsman, for the old schoolers who know, Mr. Monkey Boy 1969 So give him a sub if you have not yet. Get it done. Um, he's a very positive dude as well. And, um, and uh, you know, just trying to share his passion for comics and... Um, all of that stuff and it's plus it's fun for our kids to see you know us doing this stuff these old guys on youtube it's uh got a certain comedic factor for them so yeah help entertain our kids that's another big part of this you know if you can't do it for them then who can you do it for you know uh let me see here i'm in uh the caribbean right there let me just click on this uh we only got a 47 percent. i didn't even bother to go outside i've been there yeah uh, Eclipse was oh so slight, but my family in Texas saw the whole shebang and said it was awesome. Oh, that's so cool. Very cool. Yep. Was going to ask you how you were doing since you've been absent and all. Yep. Taking a knee for the moment. There we go. There is Rocky Inc. There is Rocky Ballesteros' channel. If you don't know Rock, Rock is an artist, um, animator, and um, he's done just about everything. He's worked on Happy Tree Friends. Um, he founded an animation studio with two other professionals um, called uh, GhostBot Animation Studios. They did um, the Aaron Insurance ads and designs. He's worked for so many different people, and uh, and he's won. He's an award-winning director, and uh, just really an outstanding guy. And it's really cool to uh, have him on YouTube and getting involved in this whole crazy YouTube thing. I've known him for 30 years. Heavens to Betsy is what I will say to that. So, yeah, I had that I had that realization that's a 30 year a 30 year anniversary of me graduating from high school uh this year and it's it'll be soon it'll be 30 years of uh you know, I think I can think we can safely count as 30 years of knowing uh that dude uh, groomsmen at each other's weddings and all of that stuff. Love it, man. Love it. Thank God for that dude, man. Uh, Rocky Inc., what's up? Saw about 20% of, uh, 20% of the eclipse, says Awesome One. It actually got cold. Yes, we had the same thing, and our porch lights came on. Yeah, it got cold here. This is scary stuff, man, but it's perfect for the kind of comics I do, all right? I love it. I, I think I need to have an eclipse in one of my uh, either No Sparrow or Monster Rat kin. I haven't figured it out yet. Um, I didn't either. Don't have the shade, so I didn't want to be yeah tempted to look at it. I meant I'm there. What's up, Ice Queen? How are you doing? Great to see you. Saying hello to everybody. Uh, John, yes, I was out of town all week and had a crazy friend emergency. Yes, the beginning of the week, sobering. Yeah, right on, brother. Understood, man. Dion, well, we're... Um, shoot, I didn't miss that. Uh, Dion says, well... We're in the path of the last eclipse, so we saw one last year or so. There you go. Everybody's saying hello, hello. I had some glasses from a dollar store in 2017. Look at this. Everybody's saying hello. we got to catch up. Oh, I live in the um, island of Rotan. Is that how I say it? Rotan or um, in Honduras. Um, remember Eclipse? I do. I do remember Eclipse comics. Those were, you know... Uh, I will say that I think we're in that time again of really cool small independent publishers but they're that's something i kind of miss i really miss going into comic book shops and having those books you know books like the rocketeer pacific comics and pacific comics presents eclipse comics mirage comics like all of those independent publishers i've been on a major uh, ninja turtles kick lately um and i blame eric weathers but i also blame myself because uh, I love the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I'm of that generation. I think it's one of the coolest and most brilliant um, independent creations that have ever 
existed in terms of the impact it had on culture and uh, the fact that it was just created by two guys hanging out in Maine and later moving to Northampton and starting this incredible studio, Mirage Studios, which was a joke because they said they weren't really a studio back when they came up with the name. So the joke was, it's not real, it's a Mirage. And then it became this gigantic, you know, entertainment uh, empire. And that is a wild, wild thing to consider, you know, how far they took that. There we go. Hopefully I'm painting in frame. There we are. Yeah, the hand control factor of this is a major part of it. Being able to, like, it, you, wanna, you want your hand to kind of do the things without having to think about it. Or else you'll, you know, shake or you won't really get the thing that you need. And that's just the repetition over time. I think that, that knowing how to draw and knowing how to paint um, it's really more, more muscle memory. You have to think about it for the first bit of it, but then composition and all of that becomes muscle memory. And that's when it becomes really fun. And so I would encourage anybody to, um, don't worry about focusing on the things that make your work look, um, polished, which is, I think one of the, the things that, you know, digital art can sometimes encourage people to do, um, you know, because they want their stuff to get to that point. But, the people that you look at that you admire, there's no way to cut um, corners when you're trying to get to having that sense of mastery where you're just moving your hand. I draw a lot of the digital stuff I do with a trackpad. It's not the technology, it's the knowledge. That's the stuff that really is going to get you to that next place. And so right here, when you're seeing the scarecrow, one of the things I do, Comrade Sammy, is Comrade Sammy in the house? There we are. What's up, Comrade Sammy? How are you doing? Great to see you. Uh, let's see here. Everybody's saying hello, hello, hello. Um, one of the things you're doing when you're trying to push something back in space is you're trying to make it have a similar value to your background, but also a similar color. So I'm doing a wash over um, the Scarecrow character, one of the fan favorites from Battle Brick Road. And again, Battle Brick Road 2, the link is in the description, guys. Um, it's, uh, it's become a fan favorite just because his design is so um, cool, so outrageously... Um, you know, I'm a loner and, uh, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like a John, you know, if the scarecrow from wizard of Oz met John wick to me, I don't know if that makes any kind of sense, but at least that's how I think about the character. And, uh, I want to just make sure that I get the character, you know, value correct. So that when people are looking at it, it'll sit back in space and I make all these little adjustments as I go because they help me to understand, you know, the, the direction of the painting. And um, I would say this, too, that, that as much as I, I spend time doing layouts and focusing in on the layouts, I also think it's important to um, it's important to just let the painting go where it wants to go so that it's not too stiff. And I think that um, if you know where everything is going at the start, sometimes it's not... I don't know. Well, it's like these streams, honestly. You just don't ever know where they're going. You know, you just have to sort of go. Um, the net uh, was off the whole eclipse, then came back after the eclipse. Awesome one. Holy cow. That's a trip. Uh, had to reveal myself at some point. There you go. John, finally, mostly um, over the cold. So hopefully, oh, going uh, diving soon. Yeah, uh, a, lot, a lot of people have been getting sick. It's been weird weather. Rocky Ballesteros, I know, right? If um, it weren't so dangerous, it'd be endearing. There you go. Uh, John, Comrade Sammy threw a couple of throwing stars in my direction to remind us she cares. There you go. That is scary. Man, craziness. Craziness. Let me see here. Yeah, I was updating. Gosh, I was updating the channel member credits um, this morning, packing up and bagging uh, boxes and packages. I was seeing um, people are getting the book, which is fantastic. Looking at my next list of people. Um, still trying to figure out things I want to do for the next campaign, things as add-ons. I really want to do, uh, with the Monster Rat Kin of Thulu, I really want to do some, um, I really want to do something a little bit more simple, like an ash can. You know, something that takes me back to the, um, the early independent days. And it was weird, I was watching, um, I'll tell you who I was watching last night, is I was watching a stream um, that Pete Sametti was doing where he was doing head sketches and I was thinking about how 
is you know i print my books on um on this kind of like glossy you know stock heavy stock paper but i remember i said to pete and it's very true i'm just as excited about getting a book and getting old books that i used to read on pulp and he still produces books on newsprint and he really makes pulp fiction still so shout out to pete Zametti, a fellow eddie um as we say and he pete Zametti was uh, i was on his channel when we funded nosfera when we crossed over the minimum funding goal so and he kept me on there it was wonderful yeah i unlike but will like again rocky there you go there it is no, no Sparrow, just a bill. <laughs> oh no, no Sparrow, just a bill. Oh, what, wait, what? No, tell me what number you are. I don't. Someone was uh, sending me a message about um, about you know has the book shipped yet, and I'm not to the five hundreds yet, so I don't know what number you are. And I don't since I don't know you didn't back it under your your name. Uh, I'm assuming it doesn't say Mr. Monkey Boy, does it on your? So if you want to let me know what your number is, um, I'd be curious to know where I'm at how far away I am. I think I had uh, Jordan uh, Horst was in here uh, a couple of streams ago and Jordan um, is was like, oh, I'm a Canadian order. And I said, yeah, I'm, sh I'm shipping those. I'm about to start shipping those again because I wanted to catch my American orders up to my Canadian orders. And he is the second order on the Canadian list. So I've already boxed his, but I haven't um, put a label on it yet to ship it and send him a tracking number. So let me just double check here. Um, it could, but no. Um, okay. Well, fair enough there. Awesome one. Hashtag commitment. Uh, Dion, I hope it works out. Yeah, never got to go snorkeling much. What? We've broken out in snorkeling here. Um, I wish Jordan Peterson was here. I did see Jordan Peterson recently, thanks to my wife. That was awesome. Uh, Mr. Monkey Boy 1969 is his given name, Shant, says Stephen Rockwood drawing. Um, Stephen Rockwood, you've never told me what your real name is. Is it Mr. Monkey Boy? And this is just your your avatar? It's very confusing. It's very confusing. I don't know who to trust anymore. Just don't know. All right, let's do this thing right here. Just making sure I'm not getting a text message from anybody. Oh, no, just more silenced calls. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's definitely um, uh, bot calling season. Definitely am getting a lot of those lately. There we go. Yeah, I love this character. I'm going to get out my reference um, for when I go into detail, but I'm right now I'm just trying to get the gestalt. And what was interesting is I didn't know... Um, I use that word gestalt for you know character design and for painting and things like that. And then I was doing... I'm taking... Um, I love the movie uh, Der Golem from 1920. It's a big influence on the next Nosferro story. And I was looking at it and I thought, um, I was like going, oh, so instead of when it lists characters, it says Gestalt or something. And I went, so it's the character. Funny enough, Gestalt is like, you know, like saying the character of a thing. So saying character Gestalt is like saying the character's character, which, uh, you know, <laughs> one of those things, man. John, it was amazing, but it's an expensive hobby to get into, so I got into comics. That's right. Are you talking about scuba diving? Oh, 441. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Um, I will be getting to 441 soon. Um, I'm going to hopefully, in the next couple of days, I want to wrap up. And it's also, I'm jumping. So if I put, if someone ordered something later or they ordered something, um, and they ordered something earlier, I'm trying to bundle their earlier orders with their later orders. So... I think it's going to be a little bit faster when I get to the end, but I'm hoping to um, have all of my B to 400 by the end of this week and getting um, and getting yours, getting to yours. So that's my plan. So, yeah, as you guys can see, a lot of spinning plates and uh, a lot of madness, but I will get there. I will get there. Yeah, I, gosh, I cannot wait for you guys to get this book. This book is the best thing that I've ever done. And I remember thinking um, when I did it, after all of this, this journey of comics and how difficult it was to break in and all of these 
moments of, you know, getting jobs and, and working on things and then, you know, have kids and then everything is just always um, so chaotic and crazy in one's life to, like, I, I had this dream for this comic I could do and what it would look like and Nosferu is that. It's, I, I feel as though it's the first thing I've ever done or the first comic I've ever done that in spite of all of the things that, you know, you, you always look at things after you do them and you go, I want to do this better and do that better. But it is the best I could do for that time and place. I'm completely proud of it. And uh, I'm so grateful to you guys for helping to make it possible and so grateful to Comicsgate. There's no other way it would have, it would have come together. There we go. Put that together. Let me see. I want to see if I have my, um, and also it'd be good for you guys to see if uh, you don't have it. What the heck is it? So many comics, so many prints, and so much stuff. Um, Sun Vigil. Uh, there's an awesome book, uh, Phil Diaz got me. Shout out to Phil. Um, and, huh. Is it here? Werewolf, the shadow. I swear I had it around here somewhere. Jason Pearson, Savage Dragon, Blood and Guts. Oh, that's weird. Where the heck is it? Complete works of H.P. Lovecraft. I've got everything here but the book I'm looking for. Hmm. I thought I had Battle Brick Road here so I could use it for reference. Is it here somewhere? Nope. Huh. I have to track that down. May have to open up a window to do that. Um, let me see here. All right. Let's see what else is going on in the chat. But haven't had the chance. Let me see. Oh, I'd like to do a live, uh, live, a live board, but haven't. I think that's what that says. Um, your kids are your best work. Hmm. Absolutely right. They are. Um, Dion makes sense. I wish I could, um, move to a comic store. Yeah, that's absolutely true. No, Sparrow is your best work, Sean. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. I mean, you've been with me since the start. So, you know, you have those, um, you have those people who you kind of meet in your twenties and you have these, you know, these, if you love comics and you're passionate about comics, you have, you know, those dreams of what you could do with things and you watch each other's you know, style evolve and all the different things going on. And so to see, you know, when Rocky did his piece for uh, the Terror in the Trenches art contest, and then to get that in a book and see that published, it was just awesome. And so it's been really cool. You know, it's been really cool this last couple of year, years and uh, last few years and the last um, year since he's been on uh, YouTube. Has it been, a, it hasn't even been a year yet, has it, Rock? Oh, that's a trip. Yep, Waiting for Bon Destiné by Mr. Monkey Boy. I know, my friend. I know, it's going to get there. Rocky, don't run down spring ball. <laughs> yeah, well, Rocky's the reason we're even having the spring ball conversation, man. Um, Rocky was on that Nosferu uh, closeout uh, stream talking about um, spring ball. He showed it on stream, and that's when, uh, when it became kind of uh, a topic of conversation. And one thing led to another, and now I've been uh, reworking it. I was working on the um, the design of some of the pages last night, still trying to figure out, you know, some of the, the character beats and the story beats for it. And um, I think it's going to be, um, I mean, it's looking great. I just want to make sure that the story, the, the idea of the story was always about, um, always about a, you know, a, putting a superhero character out there who was, positive he wasn't human and it was like a fun um it was a fun kind of max fleischer on one level and then just monsters and a superhero but in a much more playful way and i think i've been able to i think i've been able to figure out how to string that whole thing um together in a new way because like with any story um my gosh it's really annoying me i can't find that like with any story um you want it to oh there it is awesome got it Yes, guys, so this is my reader copy of Battle Brick Road. So, yes, I finally have my um, 
what is it oh uh second issue kind of scarce oh of spring ball yeah i know we've got a lot of them or we did um but i know it's very scarce i want to see some of uh so this is this is battle brick well that's uh not in frame this is battle brick road right here and uh this is some of the cool like mythos and stained glass coolness and so if you don't know what eric's work looks like this is some of eric's stuff and uh this is my sort of reference cheat sheet i have two copies of the book one of them is um the kenneth rocafort cover which is my reader copy and then i have bagged and boarded over there i have eric's copy um where he did the cover on it so yeah so this is what i look at when i'm figuring things out so i'm just trying to figure out um where are we Gosh, these characters are great. Look, I mean, look at that. Guys, if, if you're not interested in uh, checking out Battle Brick Road, man, look at the Scarecrow. How great is that? How great is that Scarecrow, man? What a great character. Mm -mm -mm. Fantabulous. Yeah, Eric definitely... <laughs> Goes the extra mile on this stuff, man. Eric's really killing it on his work lately. It's wild, because I only met him with Battle Brick Road 1, but I know he's been doing comic stuff for a very long time, and of course we've been talking art now. Um, regularly. Which is nice. And there, by the way, is uh, John Malin's cover for Battle Brick Road 2, guys. So if you haven't backed Battle Brick Road 2, the link for that is in the description. Yeah, I like it too, Dion. It's good stuff. Oh, sure, ruin it for me, says Mr. Monkey Boy 1969 um, At John, uh, this applies to both sexes. If you're going to have long hair, you need to keep it combed and clean. That is very true. Mr. Monkey Boy, I can sell you one for $1 million. Yep, indeed. Michael Dietje is in the chat. I love that Roquefort cover on Battle Brick Road. Uh, yeah, that was one of, I think that was his first uh, Comic Skate uh, commission, if I'm not mistaken. And... It's still one of his best. I love the stuff he does, but this this was a this was a, a divinely inspired drawing. The, here's the crazy thing about um, I was thinking about this with a lot of people's work. Kenneth has one of these really uh, kind of explosive and you know kinetic styles. And interestingly, the more structured a character is in terms of its design, the more his energy affects the piece it's almost like the crazier a character design is um it looks good when kenneth draws it but it's if it's how do i put it if he's drawing a character that's more iconic in its design he gets to play more with his stylistic and that's one of the things i love about it man I have a dollar 40 at rocky ballesteros this is mr monkey boy there you go man there it is yeah i mean that's that's probably one of the things now okay but shipping is one million dollars you knew it was gonna happen you knew it was going to happen. Oh my gosh, you guys are hilarious. So yeah, I mean, that's the cool thing about it. There we are. And for anybody who hasn't signed up yet, speaking of Terror in the Trenches, and Rocky's outstanding piece for Terror in the Trenches, uh, the art contest, Terror in the Trenches too. the sign-up for the Indiegogo is in the description. So if you have not signed up for the mailing list for terror in the trenches too uh it's going to uh be something you do not want to miss that book was a smash and i think that um vaughn has got a lot of very cool pulpy awesome stuff planned for book two so make sure you don't miss it there we go we're starting to put things together now guys we're starting to put these things together let me move the camera a little bit so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And let me zoom out too as well. Because I keep forgetting that I want to make sure you guys can see as much as I can see. So yeah. So here you're starting to see the... Um, let me grab this book again so I can look at it for reference. Here you're starting to see you know, where Toto is and where all of the characters are. Let me see here. If you don't know what Toto looks like in this story... This is what Toto looks like in this story. Toto's a serious sphere, all right? He's he's bringing the thunder. Uh, he's armed to the teeth, and that's what we're dealing with here. Kind of like R2-D2 in that sense. 
Although I don't know if R2 is as armed to the teeth as Toto is, so. Cool. Just making sure I have. Yeah, I mean, I know this is going to sound funny, but it it's very difficult to illustrate a character that is a perfect sphere and have that dynamic quality to it. So this is probably going to take some, this is going to take some thinking here. And let me see, do I have a, um, I don't think I have one around, so I'm just going to have to wing it. Alrighty. And let's see. Shanth slow-mo. Yeah, that's right. Oh, the lag is back. Sorry, guys. Um, Shanth, can you show the whole piece, the whole piece of this thing or the whole piece of your thing? So this right here is the piece for Battle Brick Road right here. Here's the entire painting composition. So there's Thea in progress, and there are the folks carrying her. So let me see. Yeah, stop printing, Lauren, said Rocky. I don't think she's printing anything. <laughs> I think it's just, you know, whatever's going on. Guess the eclipse reached Rhode Island? Yeah, no, it's not. I don't think it's reached Rhode Island. Let me see here. Yeah, I don't know why it's lagging. Is it still lagging? Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, I don't know why it's lagging. Guys, I have not had a lot of luck with my streams lately. I don't think we're doing anything different, you know? And I have a direct cable coming in, so unless there's something going on with uh, the printer or something like that, I cannot imagine. I think it's just the way that the, uh, what do you call it, the internet is. Let me see. There we go. Well, we'll hopefully it will... Uh, it will sort itself out a little bit. It did before, so you never know. There we go. Let me see. I can't think of any Toto songs. <laughs> Insert some funny Toto song title here, yep. Awesome, the whole piece um, of your thing. Haha, <laughs> not my... <laughs> there you go. That's right. Ew, Rocky. Yeah, I know. You know how it goes. Africa? Wasn't that Toto? Yes, I think it was. Yeah. Those are good things, man. Those are good times. Very good times. There we go. Yeah, what I want to do with um, with Lion in this is I want to make sure that I have just a, um, the kind of the dynamic quality of his feet and his paws when I get there. Even if I edit it and adjust it as it goes, that's that was something that was really important to me to try to get there because when I was in when I was in college, um, I was there was this uh, industrial design magazine on um, Paralympian. Amy Mullins and Amy Mullins uh, had these prosthetic legs. They were the sort of the first of the um, the kind of blade design uh, legs, and she had those. And I thought that is so cool. And they were inspired by and based off of a cheetah. And I really wanted to do that. You know, maybe the rains down in Africa is affecting Sean's bandwidth. It's always possible. Stay calm and drink soda. Amen. Yeah, my thing or your thing. It happens. Um, yeah, hmm, thing, says awesome one. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely suspect. I mean, I don't know what else we can say about it, you know. It, it might very well be suspect. Let me see. Yeah, this is all this, this is the reason why, one of the reasons why I've been thinking about doing some more pre-recorded stuff. And while I figure out my internet situation, because it's just, oh man. And it could also, the other thing is it could be my laptop too. Um, I have a pretty decent laptop. It's what I do everything on. Um, but it's, you know, 
they go through a lot. It's a lot for it to work all of the time. There we go. There we are. There you go. Now we're starting to come together. John, that was the only one I could think of. There you go. Um, I remember you designed, yes, a comic character, Zip Ribbons. I remember that character uh, with those legs. I do not have that anywhere. I bet you have it. <laughs> bet you have that drawing. Yeah, I came up with a, um, a comic book character that had prosthetic legs. And uh, the story was that, um, that I had, or the idea I had, is that she could run incredibly fast, obviously, but that her legs um, became damaged because they couldn't handle the strain of how fast she was running. And so um, in order to be able to run fast and, you know, and, and maintain what she wanted to be able to maintain, she um, had these prosthetic legs given to her to make it a little bit, you know, to, so that she could run, so that she could do what she had to do. And it was such a... I was always trying to figure out ways to design visually cool characters. And so whenever I saw something in industrial design or architecture, I was always... Um, I was always excited and quick to grab it and try to see if I could come up with something for it. There we go. Bring that around there. It's quite fun. There we are. There we go. So yeah, I want to really have this have a lot of bit, a lot of energy. I think your stream lag is because. Uh, you got too much awesome art being piped in there. Uh, I wish. Yeah, I think my stream lag is because my stream lags. ZZ Top legs. There it is. Awesome one is bringing that to the rescue there. Yes, indeed. You got to love it, man. You got to love it. Yeah, gosh, I remember. Those were such great times, though. I love those times. Man almighty. Let me see here. I'm just going to check the stream out because I'm just curious. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh well we'll figure it out one of these days we'll figure it out one of these days um we're getting there all right let's do some more and yes indeed check out zz top zz top will improve your day all right so let me see so according to the sketch so if you know this character and you should get acquainted with this character if you don't know this character um they have these panels that kind of it's hard to describe because it's a very it's a very high-tech um design but it has these side panels that come off and they almost float there so you don't really see what they're connected to and one of the things i, I wanted to do with this illustration was to kind of Put a little bit of a um, put a little bit of an emphasis um, on the fact that this character is is you know kicking kicking ass and uh, but have it happening off of frame. So I'm having this character. I'm doing everything with the action here with the feathers flying, and that's been kind of the plan. Sean streams though multiple dimensions of space time to reach us. Yes, I certainly do. I think I need a prosthetic liver because my body can't keep up with my diet. I've been there. I blame all the pizza joints in your area. I agree. I agree. One, uh, oh, proper, laugh out loud. I thought it was a joke vid. Yeah, 100%. Um, let me see here. There we go. go bring that around I'm gonna move that out just a little bit more there we are and so with this in the initial stages of, of putting it together 
I want to have this pop a little bit, so I'm going to mix in a little bit darker value, and it's going to be a contrast off of that background. So I'm going to t start with like a purple ground on the yellow, and then we'll see where we go from there. And let's see. Yeah, if we all stream that ZZ Top video, it will for sure lag the stream. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my lord. Yeah, I'm gonna start. You know what I think I should do? I should just start saying it's because you guys are streaming ZZ Top. That's why my stream is lagging. It has nothing to do with me. It's not my fault at all. It has to do with the solar eclipse and sunspots. There we go. Oh, <laughs> just drop my brush. Oh, lordy be. If it's not one thing, it's another. There we go. So... Okay, I'm going to put a highlight on there. And let's see here. Okay, switching computers. Be right back. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Uh, let's see here. Time to rip up a chicken for dinner. Oh, gosh, I'm hungry for chicken. That'd be great. Um, let me see here. Yeah, get yourself some chicken. That's the key. I think my computer needs some chicken to get... Uh, get streaming there we are There we go. All right, so now I feel like I've got at least a placement sense on this. Uh, yeah. You know, can I say this too? Um, I know we do this thing uh, with uh, chickens in the chat, but can we get chicken legs in the chat? Can we maybe do that? That would be awesome. Just chicken legs. Oh, you know what I love too? I know people think this is whatever, terrible food, but when theme parks or fairs sell turkey legs, oh, so good. Man, I could just eat a turkey leg. It'd be great. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Mike Barron launched his Nexus book. I will get a link. Very cool, man. I didn't know that. Is he launching it on uh, Kings tonight, or was it, it's been launched for a while? Spatial time distortion. Absolutely. Sean's <laughs> multiple dimensions. Absolutely right. Turkey legs are a bit dry. Mm. Really? Really? Come on now. Come on, fella. I love me some turkey legs. Oh, man, Thanksgiving is my favorite, favorite thing in the world. I love, like, I don't know where you can get it, but, oh, you know what I used to love? You know what I would kill for? Um, and that's uh, a metaphor, YouTube, since you've been so helpful lately. Um, I would love to get one of those turkey, um, turkey mashed potatoes and gravy microwave meals I used to get, those Hungry Man meals <laughs> when I was a kid. I freaking loved those, man. So good. Yes, chicken wings are better than turkey legs. Yeah, I will definitely take either. I will take gravy. Just a cup of gravy. Headless bourgeoisie, welcome. It's great to see you. Those giant deep fried turkey legs are awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was watching a YouTube. This was a little while ago, like maybe a couple of years ago. I was watching a YouTube behind the scenes video on how they make the turkey legs at Disney World. And I was like, okay, I got to stop. This isn't good. This isn't healthy. And thank you coming in, coming through for us in the clutch. Uh, we've got Stephen Rockwood with Terra in the Trenches Volume 2 sign up, but also 
Mike Barron's Nexus Scourge right there on Indiegogo. So there it is, guys. He launched it during the eclipse. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool idea. Oh, thank you, guys. All legs are welcome here, but especially uh, turkey and chicken legs. You, uh, you stuck gravy in your computer? I think I did, actually. I think I did. Um, who knows? Who knows at this point? I'm going to try, um, you know, putting my, uh, my computer in the sink and washing it and seeing if that helps later today. That's what I'm going to do. It has to happen. There we go. There we are. Yeah, I'm really excited about um, all these Nosfero packages getting out to people and people getting the book in their hands. It's um, it's so fun. Every trip to the post office is always a blast. There we go. Now let me do... I'm trying to think, because, you know, I don't really think that much about where I want the lighting to be when I'm painting. I think about it a little bit, but it's it's really compositionally because when you're um, when you're looking at a situation, you adjust the contrast based on your eye's focus. So it's not always about where the light is located. Sometimes it's about where your eye is focused. And you want people to be able to fall through a painting and through an illustration where they're just going, you know, kind of like it's um, got a symphonic quality to it where they're falling through the whole composition. And that's what I've been after, man. It's like, look at this. I mean, just look at like the, all of the fun stuff, man. Guys, I hope you like Battle Brick Road as much as I do because there's some cool stuff. You know, maybe it's the little people of Stonehenge can help. Yeah, my kids will absolutely help me with, with the Wi-Fi stuff if I ask them. Um, it's, it's just, uh, there's just so much going on at any given time. You guys know how it goes. It's, um... Oh, Lordy. We just try to keep it all balanced as best as we can. And uh, my wife was showing me her outstanding... Uh, she just got new business cards. She's a graphic designer. She does incredible work. And she was showing me her new um, business cards. And, and I was like, when did you do that? And she's like, oh, right before I went out of town to go and uh, college visits and all that kind of stuff. And I was just thinking about, God, we never stop working. But she is uh, such an amazing creative artist and designer herself. And if you back Nosfero and you've received your copy, then you know that she wrote uh, really an unbelievable intro for me in that book. So thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, we've been in this uh, in this crazy thing um, in terms of uh, Comics Gate, and she's been with me when Spring Ball was at New York Comic Con back in the early 2000s, and the Philadelphia Comic Con. That's where two of the conventions we went to. We went to a couple of other ones. I think we did Chicago. We might have done Chicago. I can't really remember. Yeah, we did do Chicago, she just said. And she's been with me, man. She's been in this with me for all this time, guys. She is uh, true blue. She's awesome. Um, Yeah. Yeah, those other ones were Haitian cuisine. There you go. Hey, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Um, Yeah. Uh, yeah. When it comes to chicken and food, I'm like, what have you got? That's all it is. Yep. One is literally killing it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. Uh, headless. Um, nice avatar. I love Gre Yes, Grendel and pretty much all of um, Matt Wagner's work. So here's a question I have about Matt Wagner. Because um, I haven't had a chance to look at it. He, is he doing the Dracula book with um, Kelly Jones? The one they just released? Is that right? Yes, indeed. Bow to Mrs. Ingetti. 100% John. And yeah, rock and roll. Much love coming back at you from Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. I think they have an action figure out of that now, don't they? Like the people who did the Rocketeer, um, you know, uh, Betty and, and Cliff figure, if I'm not mistaken. I think they do have one of those out. Yeah, he's writing it. Yep, there you go. Yeah, you guys know it. Yeah, that's some great stuff. Yes, Matt Wagner is. Guys, I really am excited about Kelly Jones doing a crowdfunded book. That is incredibly exciting to me. Some of my favorite times in comics, or at least some of my favorite books to come into, um, come out of the comic book art form, have been some of the stuff by Warren Publishing. And again, um, if you've been, you know, in this this space where the mainstream has been the big thing for your, and I know nobody here probably has been, has been the big thing or manga for your entire collecting life, um, there were some 
outstanding independent comic days in the 80s. Um, and I'm sure like on either side, but you think about things like Bucky O'Hare, think about Kamiko, I think it was comics. You think about, um, oh gosh, um, the star and even before then, of course, the Warren publishing stuff, uh, that led into Bernie Wrightson doing Swamp Thing, all of that stuff, the E, the EC comic stuff, the, um, creepy and eerie stuff. There's just so much great work out there. And I miss those times so much. I miss those times. Yeah, he's also releasing a new Grendel, Grendel Prime series. Very cool. I'll have to spend a million dollars to get that one. One tier. I know it. I know it. So, yeah, so I definitely, I was excited and I backed, um, you know, Kelly Jones and uh, Matt Wagner's uh, Dracula, the Impaler, because I love uh, Kelly, Kelly Jones' stuff. Okay, let me let me change that. Um, I was talking to um, to another buddy of mine. Uh, from college, I was talking to a friend of mine named Arvin about Kelly Jones's work, and I said, you know, the thing about it is, I was such a Marvel guy, and he is such a DC Comics guy. He's a DC Comics uh, fanatic, um, and uh, I will defend his love of his DC Comics uh, because he is a true blue DC Comics fan. And um, and I was saying to him, you know, I really didn't get or see kelly jones's work when it first came on the scene like i didn't i think just because of it was batman and all that stuff and i had kind of drifted out of of marvel and dc and then when i saw that um the kelly jones batman black and white volume they put out there or i think maybe it was just his dc comic stuff does anyone know what the heck i'm talking about it was really good it was really really good and his, the work, and I went, whoa, this dude was crazy. <laughs> Past tense, sorry. Yeah, there you go. Kelly Jones is doing a crowdfund book. Yes, him and Matt Wagner are, did a book, and I think you could still get it, like pre-order it, even though it was a Kickstarter. It's complicated, but it's called uh, Dracula. The Rocky's already got it. Yeah, Dracula the Impaler is what it's called um, by Matt Wagner and Kelly Jones. So it's right in his wheelhouse. You know, it's it's going to be great. Yeah, when I first... Sorry, my glasses just fell. When the first uh, Dead Man Mini that he did with Mike Barron, speaking of Mike Barron, um, I, it came out, I was blown away. Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, thanks, Rocky. I, I love when my friends get to meet my other friends. It's very cool. Very, very cool. And, um, you know, we'll do these streams with whatever YouTube is doing. I'm going to go through and all of the streams that they throttle, and it's really obvious, the analytics don't match the outside of the video. So last night's video does, or yesterday, whatever it was, doesn't match the analytics. The one from eight days before that doesn't. I'm just going to go through private those, and I'm going to start trying to do some pre-recorded stuff because I've got a lot I want to do um, to kind of promote Nosfera and promote everything I'm doing, and I've just got to find some workarounds for um, the YouTube stuff because it's exhausting, man. It's a lot, and you know, then there's the technology of the streams, and it's like and my wife is is awesome she understands because i just say to her babe i'm like sometimes this stuff is so uh it can be so frustrating and it can be so daunting trying to remember all this stuff and then have the technology or the algorithm work against you but you know we're all we're all dealing with it so we're all working on it and having you guys here having you guys show up and having you know you i know it sounds crazy and it's going to sound like your standard youtube pitch and if it is whatever but when you guys have your notifications turned on and all that stuff, it makes it so much easier to do this because it, you, you just feel as though you're being buried constantly. It's crazy. Yeah. I think your analytics would be better if you stopped putting gravy in your computer, says Rocky. But then I wouldn't have gravy. That's confusing. That's confusing. Yeah, I need chicken and gravy in the worst way now. You guys are making it awful. Um, why, why are we doing this? Bye, Dion. Take care, my friend. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Oh, when I first saw his dead bear, his dead man stuff and, uh, Mike Barron was writing it. Cool. I caught that one. Yeah. Take care guys. When you're, when you head out, be careful. We've just had an eclipse. So you might not be fully yourself yet. Uh, but yeah, so I saw, I saw Kelly Jones's stuff and I sent my buddy Arvin a message and I said, dude, I did not understand that he was a, um, he was in the lineage of like Bernie Wrightson. That was his big influence. All I saw was this super, you know, uh, jacked up Batman and Bane. And I wasn't seeing the kind of um, artistic through line of, um, 
the swamp thing and all of that stuff Bernie Wrightson did. And I and I'm kind of glad because it's nice when you miss artwork. Um Thank you for that, John, because I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, Comrade Sammy is tired. Well, rest Comrade Sammy. Um, but when I saw that, um, I love when I discover stuff that I missed. That's great. It's it's a really fun thing. So I, I'm kind of glad I missed it so I could enjoy it now. And uh, yeah, he did some great, great uh, black and white artwork in those books that I just missed. You know, I missed it because I was just, uh, you know, I was, like I said, not collecting DC Comics. And certainly not, I wasn't collecting monthly comics from DC if I was collecting comics. I was getting things like The Killing Joke and things that I, I you know, either had missed or as they came out, like The Dark Knight Returns. But I was largely at that point, you know, buying independent stuff like The Rocketeer and that stuff. So it was great. It was really fun to discover Kelly Jones's work. And so uh, very happy to see that he's in the independent space doing independent work. Look at this stuff, guys. Isn't this fun? I love this kind of comic stuff. Uh, let me see here. Did you see, um, talking about coffee? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That actually sounds really good right now. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. You guys talk amongst yourselves. myself a Starbucks coffee drink from the fridge cuz I am needing some caffeine. Mm. Drink if you got it. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um not nah, comrade, comrade Sammy always talks in the third person. There you go. Uh Dark Horse is putting out a soft cover of Dracula Wait, of their crowdfunder in October? Uh, Kelly Jones has a couple of great artist editions out there, Batman and Dead Man. Now, were those artist editions, or were those the ones that they were not artist editions, but they were like artist editions that DC put out? Like, I think they had a different name. Because I was looking for one online, and um, I was kind of thrown by it. And I was like, what? wait, what is this thing called? It was crazy, man. Oh, man, I can't remember what it was. Okay, I just got a yes, but I'm not sure what it was. To... Oh, okay, so it's of the Kickstarter. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, man, that sounds really cool. Oh, they were technically graffiti editions. Do you remember when Graffiti Designs was doing all of that really great stuff with um, Rocketeer and Madman and all that? That's the stuff. That's another great time in comics. I was a huge, huge fan of Mike Allred. Uh, obviously, Rocky was there. Apparently, I didn't remember you being there, dude, and I apologize. But Rocky was there when Mike Allred inked my uh, my Spider-Man uh, submission page for Marvel. And I just, man, I loved that stuff. Oh, okay, so are they still selling that? Are they still selling that stuff, Rock? Or is it out of print? Because I was seeing it sort of out of print, so I don't know. But, um, oh, the gallery editions. That's what it was called, Rock. I couldn't remember what it was called. Nice. Nice. Yeah, th see, that's the stuff... When I do the Nosfera without uh, the lettering in it, that's going to be the fun thing. Mm. Time to lose this headache. This eclipse headache. Mm. Try to get some energy, man. Mm -mm -mm. Water all over my beard. Yeah, I mean, there uh, there's so many things I want to do. And... Um, in terms of with Nosfero and, you know, doing the art only edition, which I think, I keep thinking that, um, where's my brush? Uh oh, I hope it didn't fall on the ground. Make sure I have the right brush. Oh, is that it? Can't really tell from that point there. Hmm. It's less than good. That, oh, wait, is this? No. I think that one's it. Oh, wait, here it is. I think it fell down here. Hang on. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make sure I have my brushes with my good points where I can get at them, particularly for this piece. But um, I keep forgetting when I'm thinking about, 
you know, Nosferu and what's the what's the the second chance campaign for Nosferu going to be about? And then I remember, hey, what's up, Crenshaw? How are you doing, my friend? Hail to you, brother. Um, excuse me. I keep forgetting, like, what is what am I going to do with the relaunch of Nosferu? And the thing I I came back to was, I was like, um, oh yeah, I'm doing an art only version of it. Obviously, yeah, marked safe from eclipse portal parademons i'm glad to hear it life of an artist well you guys are watching life of whatever i am and yeah life of an artist is crazy hello crenshaw everybody's saying hello hello yeah graffiti uh designs produced those for dc i think like idw does and called them gallery editions they did ronin the same way i love frank miller's ronin and i love frank miller too man frank miller's stuff um and i mean his his um in particular his art and his writing together i like his sin city stuff i really enjoy 300 i think that's just a a killer book i love the way that he um he did that uh as a horizontal and when uh lynn was it varley his uh ex-wife i think when she was really on point with her colors before the digital stuff uh that whew, that was some crazy crazy good stuff collaboration wise and I also got to say, I like Klaus Janssen's ink on uh, Frank Miller in uh, Dark Knight. They, that was a really great team up. Klaus Janssen is amazing, both as an artist and as an inker, too. Um, and the same way, I guess, Gary Martin is when you think about it. I mean, I've been looking at Gary's uh, Instagram stuff, and that's that stuff is gorgeous, man. That stuff is beautiful. Shout out to Gary Martin. I've got Gary's book on the next... Um, uh, what do you call it, um, on my next uh, shipment of books that are going to go out to uh, to the U.S. folks. So, let me see. There we go. It's coming together. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, Graffiti Designs produced those. John is saying hello. Uh, yeah, that's it. Sleep, Comrade Sammy. Speaking of IDW, Scott uh, Dunbeer just left idw and will be starting his own publishing company weird huh what does that mean for the frankenstein artist edition because i heard that his whole thing was is that was his magnum opus was to try to get that thing over is that dead now yeesh that would be unfortunate because that's the artist edition that i would um i mo would love to see like that's the artist edition that um I was hoping they would release. Yeah, Miller is probably my favorite writer-artist. I was a kid when he took over Daredevil, and it was really exciting. Ah, oh, dude, that's awesome. Yeah, you know what's funny is his um, his Daredevil, you know, art and writing is really cool. I like seeing him during his formative years, you know, on that stuff. I mean, that was just crazy stuff. The stuff he did with, um, with Mazu Kelly is very interesting and it's very heavy but there was um there was something great i like his more uh bare knuckle sort of stuff you know uh his very um i don't mean born again i mean year one but his um his uh that's what i'm looking for when he did the dark knight his writing and art together just had this rawness to it and it, they were it was straight comic book like it was just over the top comics and you know it's it's weird to think about now but i like i like the uh, pen and ink with the painted backgrounds it's really a great look man yeah uh 100 headless bourgeoisie 100 says my main man my can of spam it's all about money rocky ballesteros um yeah i hope it's happening because i i'd love that you know i'd love to see that book come out yeah sin city is probably my favorite miller work you know what's weird is that I do not have, um, I've been planning on at some point, um, I got a million things before that, before I buy that, but I would love to own the big editions of Sin City because I do think it's, it's brilliant work and it's something to have in your comic book library. Yeah, Sin City remains epic. Absolutely right. Yeah, he approaches superheroes like a cartoonist, if that makes sense. No, it makes total sense. It's one of the things I like about Will Eisner's work too, is that he doesn't, um, He's not a... What is it? Uh, the same thing they said about Jimmy Cagney. That Jimmy Cagney could go big without hamming it up. And I think that Frank Miller could definitely ham it up. But he could do things where 
he goes big, but when you're young and you're or you're whatever, when when you love comics, it it just hits you in a particular way. And I remember when Superman is trying to stop that that uh, giant you know missile, and you know it's just all silhouetted in black with the red star on it, and you see this tiny Superman trying to stop it with his red cape. I love it. In fact, I've got the over there, you know where I keep stuff that inspires me. I have the uh, hardcover single issues of the Dark Knight that he did, the Dark Knight Returns to Dark Knight Falls, and then I have the um, DC Direct. Uh, versions of his Superman and Batman in his style. And I wanted those since I was a kid. I love Frank Miller's Superman. Love the way he draws Superman as this like giant chin. And damn, I just, I, I thought it was so cool. I wish every, I used to think about that. I go, why doesn't every artist draw Superman like Frank Miller does this really crazy, you know, badass, gigantic guy, you know, like even when he's Clark Kent at uh, Batman's uh, funeral, Bruce Wayne's funeral. It's like, how could you ever hide the fact that you're Superman? But I just, I loved that about him. And the way that he was in silhouette, and he was like this very, uh, just imposing and haunting kind of figure. Loved that about Miller's uh, Superman. So cool. Yeah, I'm not happy with whatever I was doing there. <laughs> so I'm just going to erase it. Or paint over it. I know it's not technically erasing, but uh, that's how I view it. Yeah, oh man, I love comics. I love comics. And you know what's funny? Is that everything that's been going on right now that, that you know, has you know me back making comics and uh, painting comics and working with people, um, it, it's, it's so, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. It's completely rekindled my love and excitement about comics as an art form and making comics like I, I'm going back to a lot of the stuff that I used to read that I thought was brilliant and going wow you could do that now you could do it you know um let me see here oh hold on a second uh me too uh he did some really cool covers for Superman miniseries called the secret years published in 84 85 oh my gosh I don't think I've seen those very cool otherwise how are you there you go good call um that Miller uh Eisner book um of their conversations it's a really good read I have not read it but that sounds fantastic Straight comic book. Uh, those crooked comic books are sus, 100%. They will take your wallet. Look out. Um, I like Ordway Superman. Draws that big jaw. Yep, those are also great. When I was... Um, I went down to DC Comics uh, to meet with Mike Carlin about my work, and he was the editor at that time. I don't remember what Jerry Ordway was doing, because this was in the 90s, but I remember him showing me Jerry Ordway's uh, artwork, because I think he was a big um, fan of and... Uh, uh, supporter of Jerry Ordway's work. So yeah, that was uh, that was how I was kind of really introduced to um, Jerry Ordway's work, was Mike Carlin showing me those down in the DC Comics offices back in uh, the 90s. Um, never got to work for DC Comics, never did any work for them. Everything was, like with so many things, everything was always a, uh, a near miss. And I think it was also the time period. I mean, the stories that I've heard from folks around there is there was just no money to be bringing in new folks and uh it was those were tough times you know people they were having to like i think it was if um and maybe ethan told this story i can't remember but and i was i was hearing this stuff from him and my jaw was on the floor he goes yeah if you worked in the dc comics offices and you had your office where there were windows next to it that you weren't allowed to turn on your lights in your office to save money and i just was going are you serious unreal um, Sean, speaking of the Kent Superman disguise, have you seen the recent, whoops, it just jumped. Have you seen the, uh, recent, um, OMG videos with O'Keefe just wearing glasses undercover? No, I have not. Oh, chicken. I'm hungry. Did you eat your chicken finally? Awesome one. Um, all right. Thanks. Oh yeah. Um, I've got at least one of those secret years issues. Very cool. Rocky Ballesteros five. There you go. Look at that. We're, we're learning all kinds of things today, guys. We are learning all kinds of things. Yeah, I mean, it's those were. Uh, it's funny. My wife was with me. Um, we've been together this long. She was my girlfriend. She was a junior, and I was a senior. And um, we went down to this portfolio review they had in New York for uh, RISD college students, and to meet editors and art directors. And one of the uh, editors and art directors who was there was Mark Chiarello. And Mark Chiarello eviscerated this kid. <laughs> 
like was it was terrifying who was in line in front of me to show his his work and so i'm thinking oh man this is i mean the guy just decided he was going to do a comic book portfolio two days before so it was it wasn't like it was his lifelong dream it was really weird and um and so i'm next in line and i'm thinking oh my god you know like this is this the, how is this going to go and I'll never forget, Mark Chiarello flipped through my portfolio or my pencils. And uh, it was one of those those happy days I can kind of think about a little bit. But the fact that, you know, where it didn't go anywhere was <laughs> kind of colored it for a while. But Mark Chiarello flipped through my portfolio and he looked at me and he said, um, it's unusual to see somebody with your level of draftsmanship, at, with this level of draftsmanship at your age. And he gave me his card, which I probably have somewhere still from then. And he said, when you get out of school get reach out to me and I'll get you a job and you know those things happen a lot and just you know Dave Stevens told those stories and uh never never anything came of it and uh it's it's uh these are all of the reasons why um you know my comic book uh journey to here I feel like uh it was like always meant to go this way but it's, whew, man, those things are the things that made me go, you know what, I can't do this comic thing anymore. It's really not the, um, oh, your stuff is terrible. Those moments don't really affect you as much. It's the countless near misses. Those are brutal over time. Yep. The eclipse has affected John. He is now a different person. I've seen it happen. Hello, Mighty Geek Studios. It is great to see you, Mighty Geek Studios. Superman's disguise works because Superman is the idea of physical perfection, and any flaw ruins that. You're right. I agree. Yep. Um, shh, my parents might hear. There you are. John, nah, I think you're five years old. Oh, wow, that's rough. It's getting serious in this chat. What have I, what have I stumbled into? But yeah, oh man, that stuff used to be... That stuff was like, oh, if I had a nickel for every time there was a near miss like that, I mean, but the, but are they though? You know, I, I I wonder sometimes if what we're talking about are really near misses or it's just a miss. You know, it's you don't. Um, you know, I, I like I, I used to tell myself, and I think that's one of the reasons why I was I was kind of like I'm not doing comics anymore, is that I would say if it was really if my stuff was really that good, and if it was, <laughs> it's awful to think about now that I was actually thinking this stuff as bad as I was they then it would have led somewhere you know and it was and so i just said i just don't think um i don't think this is what i should be doing you know and i didn't have any clue what was going on you know inside those offices and how tough it was but it was definitely it was easier to go into things and do things like concept art and all of that but i still kept making comics i self-published i was still in the mix with it but um but, you know, that Mark Chiarello moment was like, oh, man, I thought that was the moment. I was like, this is the moment I'm going to be telling people, you know, and then I started working on this. I was smiling ear to ear on my way uh, back from that portfolio review. And, you know, it's like I was Lauren and I like we were on this bus going back up to Rhode Island. And I was like, going, oh, my God, this is great. <laughs> oh, man, I have so many of those stories, guys. I have so many of those stories. I I. Oh man, those are brutal. Those are brutal stories. I, that's why I just don't take anything for for granted, or and I don't assume. I don't ever assume anybody's enthusiasm to mean it's actually going to lead somewhere. You know, it's you just have to kind of go whatever. Um, you shouldn't find that business. Oh, you should find that business card, Shanth. Good thing you could put it. Uh, you could. Good thing you could put it in your books. I should actually. Well, it's funny because I know a lot of people who are friends with Mark Chiarello. You know, and who know him well, like my uh, my my brother Nick knows Mark Chiarello, uh, and uh, Brian Stelfreeze, my mentor, knows Brian uh, Mark Chiarello really well too. So it's not like um, you know, it's just, but it's just guys. I actually had um, I have a bunch of my rejection letters from Mike Carlin and people like that. It's crazy, man. Headless bourgeoisie, save me eBay. Uh, let me see here. Um, that issue can't be reprinted for some reason. I heard it had to do with Steranko's contract for the pages he did or something. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Repr hashtag reprint Shanth. There you go. Uh, let me see here. Um, smiling faces. Look at all this, this lovely stuff. Yes. Clone Shanth. Yeah. Um, oh my Lord. Yeah. Those were crazy times. I don't, th I think that, you know, one of the things that's kind of fun about, you know, having folks like, you know, Rocky and, and my wife knowing me during that time is that 
you know, people were there and they've been a part of that, that journey of you getting to all of the places that you end up getting to. And so Nosfero, when I was on stream with Rock and he was opening up Nosfero, it was a big moment for both of us, you know, because when I told Rocky, I go, Rock, I said, I'm not doing, I can't, I'm not, I just, I can't do comics anymore, man. It's, I've been doing comics forever. I've, I've met comics. I've more than halfway so many times trying to like get my foot in the door. I've approached it every conceivable way one could approach it. And I have to, you know, it's like, I have to take a hint here. It wasn't like, oh, and comics is wrong. It's like, I clearly, there's no place for me <laughs> in this. There's clearly no place for me in comics because I've given comics every opportunity and editors and everything else. I've self-published. I've done this and it's just too impossible to do. And, uh, it's not like comics gate and and being in this it's this isn't something i just woke up one day and went oh i think i should try comics guys i it was it was grueling and it's nice to have you know i i wouldn't believe half of it happened if i didn't have um people around me who were there when it happened because it would just i mean people would just hear the stories and be like oh really i'm like yeah really oh reprint i was trying to figure out <laughs> there you go there you go. Yeah. Craziness, man. Ugh. So much insanity. But, you know, these were... I, I really do believe, and something I, I always want to make sure I say on these streams, I really do believe there's no time like the right time, and that, you know, sometimes, you know, things are meant to happen when they're meant to happen. And, and I have to believe that when I do my work. I have to believe that you know, being a parent, I have to believe that being, you know, a husband, being a teacher and all of that stuff is that, you know, you can't, um, you can't find, you know, get stuck on those, those moments of, you know, where you thought it was going to go one way and it didn't go that way because that's, that's most of life, man. That's like most everything are those moments. And, uh, it, it just will, it'll, it'll drive you away from the things that you're, you're passionate about or it will, make you make decisions to not ever do something that you really should come back and revisit. And I think a really great example of that is um, Spring Ball because uh, Lauren has been suggesting I do something with Spring Ball forever. And then it was just this series of events of Rocky showing it during the closeout that led to something. Cheers to you, brother. Much love, man. Um, and it's, you know what I mean? Like it's maybe, but I go, maybe now was the time I was supposed to do that book. Maybe, you know, and, and it's, you can't hold, it's weird, but you can't hold a grudge with your artwork. <laughs> you have to sort of just go. And I was kind of doing that with Spring Ball. And I was sort of going, no, I don't like this and that. And uh, and I just said, you know what? If I go by the uh, full quote, the customer is always right in matters of taste. If there are people in Comicsgate who want me to do something with Spring Ball, who am I to not do that? You know, who am I to, to not uh, take the opportunity to do something with Spring Ball? So that's what I'm going to do. You know, and we all, I mean, everybody in comics, everybody in life, you guys know this. We all have stories like that. We all have those, those, you know, things that zig instead of zag. And sometimes you realize, well, that was for the better. And I, that's what I kind of think is the case. I have to just have lifted up a little bit more. I was thinking I was going to have it lower, but I don't think I want to do that now. There we go. Now we're figuring it out. He's like a tiny, I mean, I'm like painting this figure. This figure is so tiny. It's like, good lord, what am I trying to do to myself here? Let's see what I do with that. And then I have to get... I was wondering why I was uh, having trouble figuring out his... Um, what I was going to do with his anatomy. I wanted to have his shoulder. He's down here. And then his arm is coming up. And then... We've got these right here, these sickles or sides or whatever, right here. Yeah, I'm really digging this character, but I'm digging um, digging Battle Brick Road, and I'm really appreciative of Eric for this this opportunity to work on it. It's um, it's been a crazy, crazy time, guys. Doing this work, doing this channel, it's like wild. And I, you know, I will say this too. It's like I know. 
I know so much more now than I did when I started, and so that's something to be thankful for. Um, yeah, I hope your tongue works again, monkey. It happens. Yeah, good people, good books, good times. Yep. Let's all repint. I agree. Mm, hope your tongue works <laughs> You guys are cracking me up, man. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Okay. There we go. Am I still painting? I'm probably not even painting in frame. Let me just make sure I've got that light over a little bit more. Not that far though. There we go. Yeah, it's coming together. Yeah, there's no accounting for taste indeed. Hmm. Let's see here. There you go. The laughter begins. The laughter continues. Um, yeah, there it's it's weird how that stuff works too. You know, it's you don't know, um, you don't know when something's going to hit, you know, when people are going to just get interested in it. And uh, you just, yeah, you just roll with it. It's weird because I, I remember seeing Cyber Frog in Wizard Magazine. Like, I didn't know what it was, but I, I remember seeing it. And um, and I didn't know really what it was or what it was about. And it's it's kind of crazy because, because of uh, Ethan's work at DC Comics and then coming back and, you know, basically completely reapproaching it on certain levels um it's i only know it as the thing that it is now and and i think it's just it's hit a totally different audience you know the action figures he's done for that are just of a quality they wouldn't be if he was doing it back then i mean this was before mcfarland toys and all that stuff i think i'm not positive but i think it was before or todd toys when it first came out so yeah never know there we are see what I've got in the chat. Shh. I think the chat ninja is sleeping. There you go. Yep. There's no taste in accounting. I've been there. Just beans. There you have it. Oh my gosh, you guys are hilarious. So now what if you do a little bit of warm wash over here. Over Lion. Yeah, I was very excited when Eric uh, was showing me his, um, he sent me a digital painting or digital sketch of this character and that was really exciting. There we go. Let's mix up a little bit more of the red right here. Shanth has um, has to do to wake her up like like a locomotive. Um, the first of Ethan's work I saw was Impulse. Wow, he did a great job with that cartoony style. Yeah, Steam Toots. That's exact or Stream Toots. There you go. Um, cheers, Shoth. Cheers, everyone. Hey, what's up, Fritzy Schnitzel? How are you doing, my friend? It's great to see you. Um, I hope you were having a wonderful day. Let me see here. Try to put a wash of this over here. Boy, this stream started out off the rails in terms of uh, its uh, lagginess and reception. We've been having an interesting uh, technological day today. But I think we're, you know, at the very least we've gotten through it, so that's good. Hope everyone else is having a wonderful day. Getting excited about comics, getting excited about the indie scene, and what's possible. It's a big part of what we're doing, is what is possible. There we go. Now we're starting to get the value together. So let me do another, just a pan over this. So this is what the entire 
composition is going to look like the entire painting. And I think now you're starting to really see um, where things are going with this and how it's going to work. You know, um, why do I talk to you people? Says Comrade Sammy. These are good questions. Uh, Hello, Mr. Monkey Boy, 1969. Says Fritzy Schnitzel. Rocky Ballesteros. Hi, Fritzy Schnitzel. John says Comrade Sammy. What? Um, there you go. Good vibes. Yep. Been a while. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, you know, Ethan talked about that. Thank you so much, Headless Bourgeoisie. I appreciate that, man. Um, Ethan talked about that. I think he was following right the the late um, uh, or Ringo on that Ringo stuff. And uh, that was just, gosh, I tell you what, we're losing some greats. Um, but he, he talked about doing, you know, working in that particular style, which they must have seen. I don't know exactly how it works, but they must have seen his stuff on um, the cartoony sort of early Cyberfrog stuff and said, oh, this guy will be a good fit. But uh, it's wild when you see the stuff Ethan is doing now, which is, um, you know, feels a lot more like what he was talking about with his, his affinity for... Um, for Brian Bolland, you know, it's just, it's so uh, classically illustrated that when I saw the early um, Cyberfrog stuff, when he was uh, doing, was it Warts and All? When I saw that stuff, I was actually kind of like just shocked. I was like going, wow, this is a real like shift in style. But I guess it was always there. You know, I mean, I guess he was always had that, that drawing ability. So we're upside down, guys. We're on the, uh, we're in Australia now. I will tell you, this has been a fun afternoon. It's probably been the most... Um, it's been the closest ish glimpse of what my typical day is like, you know, cause it's a combination of, of painting, packing up books, shipping books and all of that stuff. Tell you what, the motorcycles are out. That means the weather is changing here in new England, but, um, but it's been a really good, um, good mix of everything I do in terms of uh, art, streaming, shipping and working on art and commissions to try to make that sweep of the composition work you know what i mean shanf does the flying monkey uh booty hand have only three fingers no it's gonna have more fingers um <laughs> more fingers it's gonna have um i'll show you exactly what it is so we got one here one there one there the thumb and then tucked right back here is gonna be that pinky finger right there I'll bring it out a little bit more and put that in. There you go. So that's kind of where it's going. I might still do some adjusting on it, but that's more or less what the plan is. So we'll see. But good question. Man. Um, let me see. And I'm going to try to put in some notes for these feathers right here. Because these feathers, even though they might go through a couple different value changes, they're a big part of the dynamic of this painting because instead of having, you know, blood everywhere and that kind of thing, which is not something I want to do with this piece per se, uh, I wanted to have feathers be the sim symbol of, uh, you know, action and uh, contact with the uh, with the enemy here, the flying monkeys. There we go. There we are. Now it's starting to come together. Let's see. Just a subtle squeeze of the buttocks. 100% Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. You're killing me. Rocky, he's hiding it, uh, holding it hostage until he gets some proper money. Oh, there you go. Um, Rocky Ball Zeros, don't you mean abandoned? Shant, does a flying monkey have three fingers? Uh, Shant, did you finish Bancroft's piece? Uh, final. Piece, final. Final? Do you mean finally? Oh, oh, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, it's a, <laughs> I'm not even going to repeat that. <laughs> oh, awesome one. Oh, you got me. Yes, I did. I did finish that Bancroft piece. So this is it. This is the um, magnum opus, uh, insane Michael Bancroft piece in all of its insane detailed glory. So yeah, we got it done, man. We got it done. It was uh, it was quite the adventure, quite the adventure in uh, painting and art. But we got there in the end. There he goes. Is this right brush? Yeah, I think it is. Just double checking the point there. Yes, indeed. That's that is pretty much my aesthetic. That is my whole artistic philosophy, uh, if I could be said to have one. That is it. That is it. Yeah, I finished Mike's. I finished. Um, I finished Mike's. Of course, Razor Fist is finished. Do I have anything else on deck? I'm trying to think if I have anything because I, I really want to get to um, get to Nosferu again, and uh, you know get to all the other stuff happening. But I think this might be my con commission for now. And then I'm gonna be selling. Um, I'm gonna be selling those commissions um, once I get them all them all done. And I I've got to contact uh, the people, the uh, you know, the actual commissioners of it to see if they, because they all have first refusal on their um, on their original artwork. So I gotta reach out to Razor Fist and um, reach out to Mike and Eric. But I'm not. I still gotta get my head there first. I want to get these things done. Let's see here. And there we go. There we are. Now we're starting to get that kind of feel of it. Yep, puppy drawing in my nose, Pharaoh. That's how it goes. Yep. If we say Bancroft three times, he'll appear. He's probably at work right now. You know it. 17 years for Bancroft's piece. That's how it felt. Let me tell you. Got to stare at that Lucent piece to take it all in. Yeah, it's it's a serious, serious painting. Um, yeah. Oh, that felt good. Uh, Mike and I, um, and we've talked about this a lot, but the same with Eric, right? And same with Razor Fist. We've gotten to know each other as artists over the this time in, in comics gate and we've gotten to know each other's work and and so when you do work for people that you know and who you've had conversations with as artists you there's a there's a different approach to it you know you're putting something else into it and that's really what it is yeah i guess uh in australia the sun eclipsed the moon i think that's how it works yes uh staring staring at the lucent piece is like staring at the eclipse it's how it feels man yeah bancroft is coming says mighty geek studios yeah um but you know it's it's the same thing it's the same thing with eric man it's the same thing with with all these guys and then the same thing with ethan when i did the um you know the cyber frog uh the cyber frog trading card man it was it was you know you get to know these artists and you you kind of sort of know um you kind of know what you want to do for the piece and then you sort of i don't know you kind of figure it out but you want it to be something that hasn't been done and that was, I mean, I'm really grateful that I did the Cyber Frog training card when I did because, you know, it's the more Cyber Frog art that gets done, the more it's tough to find a, um, you know, an interesting angle on it. And, you know, I love uh, Jay Lee's piece. I love the stuff that Dale's been doing uh, for Cyber Frog of Salamandroid. And, um, yeah, there's some really, really cool Cyber Frog artwork out there. Really cool Cyber Frog artwork. And actually, now that I have the PVCs and action figures, I think it'd be a lot easier to do a piece because I really didn't have any great reference back then. And it's a little bit tricky for me to draw from somebody else's drawing. I have to have a jumping off point for it. So with um, something like this right here, it's it's a little bit easier, but Cyber Frog is a very strange character design. He's very detailed. He's got a lot of reflective surfaces. He's an amphibian, but he's also crossed with, um, obviously, a robot and uh, a cyborg. And, uh, oof, yeah, that was a tricky one, man. That was a tricky painting. Yeah, and in Australia, there is no sun. They film underground in France. I agree with that. The comic shops are choice. Uh, what's up, Son of Liberty Radio? How are you doing? I'm driving. Continue to entertain me. I will. I will. 
Son of Liberty Radio. I will. Uh, no, no, oh, it's uh, not Bancroft's name, but Bond Dessine. Uh You have to say it three times for him to appear. Oh, I got you. Cyberfrog was, whoa, just jumped. Cyberfrog was one of the many titles following the success of TMNT in the 90s. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I remember... Um, I remember the ads in Wizard Magazine, you know? It's crazy, man. It's absolutely crazy. To think, like, that's another... But see, this is the thing, right? Is that would any of us... The road has been long, and it's been winding. Um, and I'm not saying... You know, I think Ethan said that recently on a stream about, you know, am I happy that I, you know, had my reputation dragged through the mud and, and you know, all that stuff with... Um, you know, being canceled for it to lead to where I'm at now. Like, whose chat was that? Or whose uh, stream? Who was interviewing? I forget. He goes, no. He's like, I did not want that to happen. I did not want to be told they're not renewing my contract. I did not want all that stress. But he's here and he's, you know, he's like, I'm here now and I'm, you know, making the best of it. Like, I've figured out a way to try to, you know, mitigate all that. And you just think that if Cyberfrog... You know, if he had never done Cyberfrog before he went to D.C., if he had never had an independent project that had some heat on it, um, and he didn't have that sort of waiting in the wings, he would have had a, a very tough road after that. But he's a you know creative guy, and he had that ready to rock, and he was able to take another run at it. And that's how I feel about I've always come up with different ideas. The independent, where you have to do everything, is my preferred way of working. It's the way that I, I've always been trying to work. There just wasn't a way to do it. So, you know, to me, Comicsgate came at the exact perfect time. It was exactly what I needed. I've been, I guess I've sort of been waiting for it to happen. <laughs> you know, uh, to come back into comics, man. It's wild. I mean, that and the fact that I, I did not realize, and I still don't, I don't understand it, but I did not realizing that, realize that being able to... Um, paint and talk at the same time was something that everybody couldn't do i mean that in the the sincerest fashion i had no idea that that was a weird thing because when i started teaching and i started doing demos i was talking while i painted did not think anything like i was like oh well this is how i have to do it i'm pretty sure brian stelfreeze uh when he was teaching me uh stuff he was talking and drawing at the same time maybe i'm remembering wrong so i i had no idea you know that 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 was that was really a thing and so, it, but it was, again, when YouTube and the mail-in method, you know, came along and it was like, um, yeah, it just, it's so weird, man. Like there's so many things I just, yeah, I'm very grateful for all of the stuff and all of you guys' support. When I look at the stack of Nosferro books that have gone out and the ones that I'm going to be sending out to wrap up the shipping, it's humbling every single day, man. It's humbling to see people get these books and you know, seeing folks like Gary Martin in there and seeing, you know, Dan Fraga and getting his book off to him and all that stuff. It's, um, it's very cool. It's cool to see that stuff. You know, seeing John and Anna and all those folks get their books is great. Seeing Phil, um, and, uh, and Michael and now Eric Weathers got his today. That's just too cool for me, man. Because we've been through a lot of craziness and Eric, especially because Eric was, you know, lettering the book. And so he, he's already read it. He's already seen it, you know. Saw hamsters before turtles. Oh, radioactive um, black belt, or adolescent radioactive black belt hamsters. Yes. Uh, my friend showed me that book, man. My friend showed me that book in school, Zach. And he was like, have you seen this? And I was like, oh, cool, I guess. You know, and then we were trying to come up with our own sort of animal characters. <laughs> it was too funny, man. We were just like, oh, what, what would ours be? I don't even know what we came up with. But we did try something, and then there was this uh, role-playing game called Rabbit or Wabbit Wampage or something like that, where it was like, on the cover of the box, it was like a rabbit with a chainsaw. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Oh, man. Those were good times, though. Those were definitely good times. Yeah. There we go. Slowly figuring out what I want him to be doing. Kind of getting there. Yeah. It's always tough with a small figure to get the gesture you want. There we are. We'll see where that goes. Um, all of... 
let me see here all of these all of these titles tried to bring back the black and white comic book yeah and i still love i mean again my first love was uh you know those black and white comics like grips by tim vigil which was a again it was a book that made me want to draw my first comic which was black and white and and it definitely just the cover of nose pharaoh is a reference to the cover of grips issue one by tim vigil so yeah love that stuff john i accept that title okay um let me see here what's the title i think shoth just called us all slackers for not being able to paint and talk at the same time no i would not at all it's a very weird thing apparently um i'm glad i got my nose pharaoh way before all those losers you mentioned agreed <laughs> Son of Liberty. <coughs> oh, no. <coughs> you just killed me. You just killed me, man. Oh, my God. The chat, right when you're starting to uh, to drop your guard, the chat will hit you with a joke and kill you. That's just the way it is. Too funny, man. And have a, I hope everybody's having a happy um, solar eclipse Monday here online thank you guys for being subscribed to this channel liking this channel for backing those pharaoh for being channel members you know all of that stuff you do super chats all of it it all goes towards making this stuff possible and i'm going to do my best to figure out how to deal with uh this whole youtube thing which has been a source of somewhat frustration and this whole bandwidth thing and keep bringing you great stuff and great books and letting you guys have a look at the process. And I promise you, I'm going to be doing some pre-recorded videos soon because I also want to put that into the mix. Um, that just sort of behind the scenes looks at what I'm doing and, and all of that stuff. So, yeah, we're getting there, guys. We're definitely getting there. All right, we are at two hours. My goodness, I made it to two hours this time, uh, unlike yesterday. And um, I'll probably leave this stream up. I'm going to go and um, private a bunch of the streams that have been throttled. And then I'm going to start adding um, adding in some uh, some pre-recorded stuff. Thank you guys so much for being here on this Monday. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday and a wonderful eclipse. That sounds really weird to say. Um, I will be streaming again soon. I'll have my show again on Thursday where we do the watch along with horror movies. Um, but God bless you guys. Thank you so much for, for being here. And again, as I always like to say and occasionally attempt to do, I say speak easy. Stay gold, keep the faith, and peace, because that is what Shanth means, guys. So, yes, black and white comic books are cheaper to print than color, 100%. Um, yep, bless you all, says John. God bless you too, man. I'm here, and you're gone. Cranberry Landers. I'm sorry, channel member Cranberry Landers. Um, welcome back. Yes, indeed. Hi, uh, Cranberry Landers. Good vibes. Bye, Shanth. Bye, brother. It's great seeing you here. Thank you for being a channel member. Alfie Zane. Says Comrade Sammy, Cranberry Langers. Everybody have a great day, says Stephen Rockwood Drawing. Later Taters, says Mr. Monkey Boy 1969. I'm still driving, says Son of Liberty Radio. Sorry, Son of Liberty Radio. Um, I'm hoping to stream soon too this week. See you all around. Yes, guys, go make sure you're subscribed to Rocky Ballesteros' YouTube channel for outstanding streams and content. And who knows? Who knows? We might even do a stream together soon. You never know. So keep your eyes peeled. JWK Creates, see you next time. Absolutely, JWK Creates. Thank you for dropping in. I appreciate it, guys. And if you haven't yet, hit the like and subscribe on your way out the door. Um, and I will see you guys soon. And so for all of my channel members, these credits are for you. Amen, Stephen Rockwood. Uh, all you fine people. I will see you guys very, very soon. Bye.